final bit of the session and is very much focused on you. You as students, and if there are any teachers present today, you as teachers as well. So what difference can you make? It's not just going to a session to learn something about it, but let's hope this will have an impact. What difference can you make? And I'd say from the point of view of being intrapreneurs, there are three key things, uh, three key areas where you can have a really big impact here. First of all, if you've got a personal interest in any of this stuff around sexual health, follow that interest. Maybe it means you'll do assignments on this or you'll check out other courses or you'll ask your, your, your lecturers at university please make sure you include some case studies for us on this. And just by talking about sexual health more often, you're helping to normalise it. Because one of the big problems is, like with Michel Foucault's triple edict, if it's silenced because someone thinks it's a, a taboo, then it's as if it doesn't even exist. So it could be that you go out into practice, you go out into different hospitals or communities, you see different things, come back to university and say to the teachers, look, this is what we experienced. How are we meant to deal with this? So start talking about it. And not just at university, but in clinical practice as well. Also, make sure that that happens not just in education and practice, but also in research. Supposing you're working with someone who's doing some research at the minute, and if they say, oh, well, the only thing I'm asking about sex is a person's gender, and I'm just saying, are they male or female? Well, what about transgender people? What about intersex people? What about people who want to be considered non-binary? They don't want to be considered as one or the other. How are they showing up in research? Because again, even when we're talking about epidemiology, if you're just asking, well, are you male or female? Because you want to know some statistics about particular illnesses. If you're not looking at how many trans people there are or intersex people, then you're missing out on real people. So it's important that this is destigmatized and put right across health, education and research. And that means, especially if you've got an interest in some of this, start talking to other people with an interest in it as well. And that's what you can do, especially to impact on your own educational provision. Go back to your universities, go back to your schools and colleges and say, we need to talk about this now. OK, raise that there. And it means that by being entrepreneurs, you will be champions for this. You will be ambassadors in able to talk uh, and able to talk about it. Maybe it means you have to go off and do a course yourself or maybe go to some some charities or third sector uh, um, organizations. Do a placement there. Find out more what they're doing and be able to feed that back to your colleagues and see what interest this is going to bring in. So that's one of the ways you can do it. The other thing is the particular model that I mentioned um, earlier that I'd refer to, and it's called this, the extended plicit model or the explicit model. Don't panic, I'll give you the full references and uh, um, an article on this as well. The explicit model is fantastic to use around sexual health, but you could use this with any area of care where you've got difficult topics to discuss, okay? It starts off because back in the 1970s, there was an American uh, sexologist, a counsellor, who came out with the term plicit. And that's the centre bit of this, this image. And it stands, the P is for permission giving. So I gave you an example a moment ago, that if a diabetes nurse specialist says to a man, look, one in two men with type 1 diabetes will have problems with their erections. How is this affecting you? Then you've now given them permission to talk about this. OK, so very, very important. Another great example I can give you is a few years ago, a 65 year old nurse came up to me and she said, I'm just about to retire now. Uh, she said, you won't remember me but you spoke at a travel nurses conference a few years ago and you said never have a travel consultation with patients or clients unless you mention condoms to them. And she said, so I started doing it. So when she was 60 years old, she said, I started doing this. Even if I get old married couples coming in, they come in for their travel vaccinations and I always say to them, and what are you doing about condoms when you go on holiday? 
And she said, even the old ones will laugh. And they'll say, oh, well, we don't need condoms, thank you. But can we mention this problem to you? And she said, what this has done in the last five years of her practice, she said, it's opened a tin of worms. She said, people are talking to me about all these issues in life. She said that I've worked all my professional career and I've never heard these things before. So permission giving is at the heart of this. The LI stands for limited information. So supposing you say to a person, um, yeah, that, that example I've just used about type 1 diabetes. So supposing you say to a person, look, one in two men get er erectile dysfunction. Um, how is it affecting you? And the person may say, well, actually, yes, I have got a bit of a problem and I don't know who to talk to about it. So the limited information might be, you say, oh, well, in our practice, we've got a leaflet. I can give you the leaflet or I can give you a website to go on to where you can talk to others. So you're giving limited information. The SS stands for making specific suggestions. So it could be that um, supposing you, 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 you're working with, like I mentioned earlier, a woman who's had breast cancer and maybe she's had a mastectomy and she's talking to you and she's saying, I still don't feel right. I feel as if I'm the only one in the world that looks like this. And you think, oh, going to a support group for other people who have lived through this could really help you. So you might make a specific suggestion. You might say, well, look, I know in our town, we've actually got a really good support group here. Would you like me to get some information for you on this? So you're making specific suggestions. And what the IT stands for is intensive therapy. Now, that's just because the man who invented this, J.A. Um, Anon, um, he was a counsellor. So he calls it intensive therapy. But what it means is moving the person on to someone who's more expert in dealing with it than you. So if you find that somebody's talking to you, so think back to one of the earlier slides here, when I asked you how difficult you find it to talk about some things. If you find certain things really difficult to talk about, one thing you can do is to say to the person, look, I'm a student at the moment and I feel a little bit out of my depth on this, but I know I can refer you on to someone else. Have I got your permission to do that? So you're, you're referring them on to someone who's got more knowledge or expertise than you. OK, now that's focused on the patient or on the client. But when you look at the outside bit of this, this is on you as the professional carers. So the one bit of this talks about self-awareness. So I asked you on one of the earlier slides, what, um, did you experience anything about erotophobia, fear of sex? So it could be fear of talking of sex. So you might think, oh yes, when anybody mentions anything to me about certain sexual issues, I just go all hot, hot in the face and I don't know how to talk about it. So you're panicking a little bit. You're a little bit stressed about it. But it's important to be self-aware, to acknowledge that within yourself and say, right, but look, I'm going to experience this for the rest of my professional life. So I need to do something positive about it. So that's where you're being self-aware. And also to reflect. So as nurses and midwives, we're always told we need to reflect as practice is happening. So in practice and maybe later reflect back on practice.